Greetings all, this is Harry Nick back again to talk about Star Wars Legion. First of all, before we dive into this, I want to say a huge thanks. The response to our last video where we did a bat rep of the game, full 800 points. We've had a great response to that. I just want to quickly notify you guys that that video would not have been possible if it weren't for general games. So if you like that video, if you want to see more like it, this is the first time that they've done a proper full-scale war game uh, with me or with anyone else. So if you like that that content, please head over to their YouTube channel and give them a subscribe. For the time being, let's have a chat about this because we had Han Solo revealed for the game of Star Wars Legion. It looks like this is going to be part of what will be Wave 3. This is going to be released in the third quarter of 2018 after Princess Leia and General Veers. Let's have a look at what Han offers. So here is the spread. Unfortunately, uh, Han's unit card was not fully spoiled in an HD version. We have to sort of squint our eyes and look sideways, but we can go through the stats here. Han cost 120 points and has what is, I believe, the decorated upgrade. Uh, this new upgrade here, which is, um, I don't know, it looks like Corellian War Stripes, but it correlates with the Rebel Commandos pack I will reveal in the next video, so maybe it's something to do with Special Ops or something like that, and the tech slot. Now, before we move on, I just want to talk about the 120-point mark because so far we've had Princess Leia revealed at 90 points and Luke Skywalker revealed at 160 points. So Han kind of sits in between Luke and Leia. It's still not what I would consider a budget commander, but it is worth noting that it is 40 points less than Luke, and that's an entire Rebel Trooper squad. Perhaps Han and Leia will be the first viable option in terms of having two commanders on the table for the Rebel faction. Between them, they cost 250 points. Uh, I don't know, maybe that'll kind of balance out. It's still significantly more expensive than, say, a Vader build. But I don't know. Moving forward, I think we're going to have to assess the pros and cons of fielding two different commanders. Looking further at Han's unit card, let's take a look at these keywords. We have low profile. While defending, if you have light cover, improve your cover by one. So basically, all of his cover is always heavy cover. Gunslinger, after you perform a ranged attack, you may perform an additional ranged attack against a different unit. Now, this is very interesting. It's not this uh, massive OP effect that I think some people are going to rate this as. You have to remember that if you take a look at the card here, uh, Han's blaster only fires at range 1 to 2. So this is only relevant if there are two different enemy units within range 1 to 2. And I don't think that's going to happen as often as people think. However, when it does happen, it's going to be very powerful. This blaster looks legit. Uh, it's the same as Luke's blaster, in case you guys are wondering. Two red dice, range 1 to 2, pierce 2. And that's really good. If you have two different enemy core units, that's going to be fantastic. You're probably going to delete a lot of minis if you manage to get into close range. We also have Sharpshooter 1 when performing a ranged attack. Reduce the defender's cover by one. Again, fantastic. So even if you have two nearby enemy units bunkered down behind heavy cover, that's going to still be very effective. And Uncanny Luck 3. We have a lot of new keywords on Han. When defending, you may reroll up to three defense dice. Which is interesting. I, I quite like that. Because Han has defensive surges. I mean, his defense dice are only white, and that's not amazing. But the fact that you have three rerolls and you get to convert your surges, that really pushes the maths in his favor. I mean, the white dice just has the one evade and the one surge, so there's a one in three chance on every roll. Um, that feels really good. I feel like Han's going to dodge more than should be normal for a unit with no armor. Han's hit point threshold is six. His courage is two. He defends with white dice. He offensively surges to criticals. He defensively surges to evade. He moves at a speed two. His brawl melee attack is three white dice. That feels pretty decent. And he has, as I said before, the same blaster pistol as Luke. Range one to two, two red dice, pierce two. Pretty solid stats all round and pretty decent. I mean, he feels overall a bit more capable than Leia. I mean, obviously Leia has her unique command cards. And I think that's really more what's happening here. Uh, Han is meant to be this sort of commando unit. He's going to be more impactful unto himself, but I think Leia is going to be better in the support role. Let's take a look at Han's command cards, at least the ones we can see here, because right here on the top of the spread, we have Reckless Diversion. When an enemy unit performs an attack, it must attack a trooper that has a face-up order token. Now, this is very interesting because that seems on the face of it to have some real tangible downside to it. You assign orders to Han and one trooper. 
And I guess you could manufacture that so that's a good thing, but you have to be careful about what you assign things to. You basically want to make sure you give your opponent bad targets. I mean, look, if your opponent's going to attack you profitably, they're going to do that regardless of whether they have this um, choice or not. But I can see this often shooting you in the foot, no pun intended. It's a win flavor-wise, in my opinion. This reminds me of that scene from The Force Awakens when Maz Katana's cantina gets destroyed and he, they all clumbing out of the rubble and Han just shoots this stormtrooper sideways without even looking. It's kind of got that same kind of image. I like that. Also revealed in this article is this card here. And I'll just scroll down and show that to you guys as well. And talk about flavor win. This is sorry about the mess. A zero pip card. So this always has priority unless for some reason FFG add more zero pip cards into the game. Han Solo, when building a command hand, treat this as a one pip card. When Han Solo is issued an order, he gains one aim token and one dodge token. And I don't know about you guys, but that seems really pushed, but I think this is one of the big reasons you take Han Solo because this is a zero pip card. And of course, yes, 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 massive flavor win. Han shot first. Thank you, FFG. It's official. This is possibly a slight jab at George Lucas. Um, but look, they know how to pander to the fans. This is a fantastic flavor win. And it's no joke. Being able to token up a character as their assigned order is very, very powerful. Yes, yes, yes. I love what they're doing with this card. And just returning back to the spread here for one moment, we have one more face-up card that we can see. This is Improvised Orders. It's that, um, I guess, decorated... Uh, I'm going to call this decorated for the time being anyway. It's that decorated upgrade slot. After an order token is drawn from a friendly order pool, draw a second order token from that order pool, choose one to use, and shuffle the other back into the order pool. If you do, during the end phase, ready this card. In other words, you have to spend this card in order to use it, but you get to use it once a turn anyway, because it's going to re-ready by itself. This costs 10 points, but I really, really like what this is doing. It makes a lot of sense on Han Solo. Um, he's going to need that extra boost in terms of being able to control the field. And it kind of matches his flavor here. I think this is going to be a very potent card. It takes away a bit of the random element of drawing blind from the order pool. I really like what this is doing. Not sure if it's worth 10 points. I mean, it can still fizzle. You might draw two order tokens you don't want, and then this is, feels really, really bad. It's knocking back the variance a bit, and when it hits that second order token that you really wanted, this is going to feel really, really good. We also have a tech card here that we cannot read, and we have Duck and Cover, which I'll talk about more in the next video because it was spoiled in the next article. That's all we've seen from Han Solo for today, guys. Uh, just one more note, we have a bit of concern over the sculpt of this one. I've seen a lot of people comment on the various Facebook groups that this isn't a great looking sculpt. It looks like it has a bit of the same issue that we've seen with the Princess Leia one. The face doesn't really look like Harrison Ford all that much. And look, personally, I'm willing to wait till we see it first hand because as I've seen from the core set from this initial release that we've got the sculpts do look fantastic perhaps this is an earlier prototype perhaps the paint job is not fantastic I'm willing to give FFG the benefit of the doubt on this one and wait and see but for the time being guys stay tuned we have the rebel commandos revealed in the next video I'm doing like and subscribe like us on Facebook follow me on Twitter and I will catch you later